veggies are not the enemy, period. Okay, veggies are always good to go. But when you're on a low carb diet or any kind of keto protocol, you do need to be aware of the carb content of some veggies. But that's not what we're gonna talk about in this video. That's been done way too many times on YouTube, on the internet, whatever. I wanna talk about what really matters when it comes down to the carb content of veggies, and that is fructose. You see, not all carbohydrates are created equal. A little bit of carbohydrate from a veggie isn't gonna hurt you, but a little bit of fructose from a veggie could do a lot more damage to you in terms of kicking you out of keto or just affecting your low carb protocol altogether. Or if you're on a low FODMAP diet where you have to be careful of a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, this video is for you as well. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, but now we pump out videos just about every single day. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then also make sure you hit that little weird looking bell icon. That's gonna turn on notifications so you get a nice little ding on your phone whenever I post a new video or do a live broadcast. I wanna make sure you check out Thrive Market down below in the description. Okay, I've got special deals for anyone that watches these videos, but also Thrive makes it so you can get your groceries delivered right to your doorstep cheaper than you get at the grocery store without ever having to leave the house. So we can be total hermits if we wanted to be. All right, let's go ahead and let's dive right into this fun stuff. We're talking about fructose. Before I get down to the list of veggies, let me explain why fructose is a little bit more dangerous. Fructose has to get stored in the liver, it has to get processed in the liver, which means it has an ability to kick you out of ketosis a lot easier. We can store hundreds of grams of carbohydrates in our muscles, but we can only store 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrates in our liver. What this means is that you can easily overdo it on the fructose. So we wanna be careful there. So what I'm gonna break down here are veggies that are high specifically in fructose, okay? This is the ones you wanna be careful of. Now, the first ones are a warning. It doesn't mean that you don't consume them, okay? You can still have these in moderation. You just wanna be careful because they will add up. The first one is gonna be onions. You've noticed that onions have that sweet taste. Well, it's the fructose that's doing that. And the fructose in the onions can knock you out of keto a lot easier than a starchy carb from say squash. Now, when you cook onions, it's not as bad. But the reason I'm not gonna go into depth talking about the cooking of onions is because it all depends on how long you cook them, what style of cooking. The fact is, you get by with a little bit more if you cook them. There's 12.6 grams of fructose per 200 calories of onions. Okay. That's a lot of onions. You're not gonna eat 200 calories worth of onions, but in order to break down the measurements in an actual digestible form, we have to use a larger quantity. So we look at a 200 calorie serving. It doesn't mean that you're ingesting 12.6 grams of fructose carbohydrates when you have a normal serving of onions. Next up is going to be tomatoes. Tomatoes are a sneaky one. We know that tomatoes have a little bit of a sweet taste, but did you know that most of that sweet taste is coming from fructose? That's why a lot of times when people make like a bolognese when they're on a low carb diet, they take ground meat and they mix it up with some spaghetti sauce. A lot of times they find they get knocked out of keto or it messes up their diet. It's simply because the fructose is a little bit higher. So all I'm saying is just use them in moderation. And again, raw tomatoes are worse. So when you put raw tomatoes on your salad, when you're doing a cob salad or something like that, you are draw, you're, you're just dancing a fine line between what could kick you out of keto and what wouldn't. So, Better off to just leave the tomatoes off. Why even have them, right? Next up is cabbage. Now, I'm a big fan of cabbage. Powerful cruciferous vegetable. It has a very, very powerful ability to help restore healthy gut. We just have to be a little bit careful with it. When it is raw, like in a coleslaw form or anything like that, we're talking 11.6 grams of fructose in a 200 calorie serving. Again, most of the servings you're gonna be consuming are probably gonna be in the ballpark of like 75 calories worth, but still, that's a lot of fructose, 11.6 grams there fermented cabbage is much better. Okay, so we're talking about kimchi, we're talking about sauerkraut. The fermentation process eats up some of the sugars. And generally speaking, it eats up the fructose first because it's a little bit easier for those kind of bacteria to break down. So we want that. Okay, so a little bit of uh, sauerkraut, a little bit of kimchi, just you know, a couple tablespoons, that's all you need, you're gonna be fine there. Bell peppers, we have gotta be careful there. You know those are sweet. So if you're making a cauliflower crust pizza or something like that, be careful with the bell peppers. The red ones have a lot more than the green. We're talking 14.6 grams for a 200 calorie serving versus 11.2 grams. Now again, if you taste them, you'll know the red ones are a little bit sweeter. These are some ones that you wanna tread lightly on. This doesn't mean avoid them. It doesn't even mean use caution, it just means 
eat them in smaller amounts. They're good ones, and I recommend you eat them, just smaller amounts. First one is broccoli. Okay, you still have four grams of fructose. It still makes my list compared to the ones that are super low in fructose, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay, so four grams of fructose in a serving of broccoli, or a large serving of broccoli, and then eight to 10 grams of fructose in a large serving of asparagus. Now, I'm a big fan of asparagus, so eat it in moderation. But most of the time, you're only having six to 10 stocks of asparagus. You're not having 200 calories worth of asparagus. So more than likely, you're gonna be fine. But if you're someone that eats asparagus with every single meal, you may wanna trim it back a little bit. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the ones that you can eat. Let's talk about the ones that you can really go to town on, because these, these are good ones, and they have a bunch of other benefits. So let's head to that side. So the ones that you can enjoy, you can really enjoy a lot of. First off, we've got spinach. Now spinach, people have their pros and cons with spinach, but you're never really going overboard. Usually you're having a few cups of spinach cooked down to ultimately be like a half a cup. It wilts down so fast. That's the thing though. We're talking a 200 calorie serving yielding only 58 milligrams. Milligrams, like we're talking a fraction of what's in the other ones, a very low fructose content there. Plus, with spinach, we get the benefits of chlorophyll. Now, chlorophyll is ultimately the blood of plants. It's what delivers the nutrients to the plants. It is the blood of plants. So we get a lot of benefit as far as red blood cell health and as far as cellular healing goes within our body with chlorophyll. So good stuff there. But more importantly, it chelates heavy metals. So it chelates the excess iron. It can chelate even some of the things like mercury that are in your gut. So very powerful there from a detoxing side of things. So go to town on that. I like to cook it up into my eggs, mix it in that way, saute a bunch of it and down to a small digestible form. Next up is one of my personal favorites and an underdog in a lot of cases, it's the artichoke. Artichokes are amazing when it comes to prebiotic fibers. They're just, they dominate the world when it comes down to restoring good gut health. 75 milligrams per 200 calorie serving. So we're looking at a pretty low dose there anyway. Now, high in inulin. Inulin is the prebiotic fiber effect. That is what allows our gut bacteria to feed on something. Inulin is food fertilizer for our existing bacteria. So if we have a good gut microbiome and we add inulin, it's gonna get even better. Then we have cinnarin, okay? Cinnarin helps promote bile. If you are on a low carb diet or if you're eating a lot of healthy fats, if you don't have good bile production, you cannot break down, you cannot emulsify those fats. You can't get good use out of them. Well, artichokes have a unique ability to stimulate bile production and also make the bile more potent. Very powerful on a ketogenic diet. Now, if you're cutting down on the asparagus because I mentioned is a little higher in fructose, you can envelop some of what you were eating there with artichokes. So mix up asparagus and artichoke together. Then we have kale. No one likes kale, so let's just skip that one. Actually, not just kidding. Uh, if you're gonna go with kale, you can go with baby kale. It's easier to digest. It's not super stocky and just, I don't know. It just feels like it takes me 20 minutes to eat a stock of kale, so baby kale's a little bit easier. But less than 50 milligrams per 200 calorie serving. High in quercetin, okay, so quercetin is interesting because it blocks histamine. So it blocks the cyclooxygenase enzyme two, which means that it can allow inflammation to go down, specifically in the joints, similar to like turmeric and things like that. Now it's a histamine blocker too, which means it can block the inflammation and block the actual immune response that we get from allergies. So if we're allergic to a certain food to a small degree, Kale can actually help that because of the quercetin. Then we've got camphorol. Now camphorol is something that blocks tumor necrosis factor one alpha. Not gonna go into exquisite detail there. It modulates inflammation through multiple different pathways. Just an overall good compound. Cauliflower. All right, so I told you to go easy on the broccoli. Cruciferous vegetable that is awesome. So we have to sub it out with something. Cauliflower. Okay, cauliflower, less than 50 milligrams again. So we're looking at a really small dose there. Very high in choline, which is a precursor to what's called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is what's going to allow our, our nerves to communicate, our neurons to communicate. So it promotes what's called synaptogenesis. So it helps the synaptic cleft. It helps that synapse between neurons. So we're actually creating more of essentially a freeway between neurons by eating more of this stuff simply because of the neurotransmitter effect. But also we have a very powerful anti-estrogen effect, which I'll talk about in a second, because we're gonna move into Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts also less than 50 milligrams per 200 calorie serving, very low. Also a cruciferous vegetable, which is very high in diendole methane. So both cauliflower and Brussels sprouts are high in DIM, which is a powerful estrogen modulator. It allows you to metabolize the estrogens that are bad. We have good estrogens and bad estrogens in the body. Okay, the bad estrogen is 1,7-hydroxyestradiol. We don't want a whole lot of that. Small amounts are okay, but we need the liver to process that, and it all comes down to the DIM that does that. Now, fun fact on Brussels sprouts, more vitamin C in Brussels sprouts than in oranges. 
We think oranges have a ton of vitamin C. No, oranges have a ton of sugar. Brussels sprouts have more vitamin C. So when it comes down to the immune system, as cliche and just boilerplate as that is, we need vitamin C. The immune, recept the immune cells actually have receptors for vitamin C, and when we're sick, it drains the vitamin C. You're gonna get more out of Brussels sprouts than you will out of orange juice, so no scurvy for us keto goers. Then finally, sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is a precursor to the phase two detoxification component of the liver, which ties directly in with the deindole methane again. So what I'm saying there is, it allows glutathione to be produced, it allows the detoxification process to occur, which therefore allows us to metabolize not only estrogen, but other harmful compounds. So these, you almost have just unlimited ability. You could just eat a ton of these, not get kicked out of keto. Those on the other side could mess you up. So just use them in moderation. Small amounts of onions, small amounts of cabbage, small amounts of tomatoes, just go easy and go to town on these. As always, if you like these style of videos where I'm doing them on a whiteboard, I break it down a little bit more, I wanna hear it from you down in the comment section so I know to keep doing this. Otherwise, I'll scrap the whiteboard and go back to a normal style. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.